Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at eSilicon with Cardi Tang, who's going to talk today about how to improve performance at 10.7 nanometers without affecting power and area. So from your perspective, how do we improve the performance without affecting the power and area? What knobs can we turn? So we're focusing on uh, using optimized uh, memory compilers that is focused uh, on specific uh, PPAs, uh, power, performance, and area, and tweaking it to specific uh, chips that we're targeting, uh, which is networking and, uh, and uh, high performance computing. So how do we get there? What, what's different? Um, so one of the solution is to use a pseudo SRAM architecture. What's that? Um, a pseudo SRAM architecture is, a, is an architecture that uses a smaller bit cell for a multi-port functionality and by using a, a double pumping the internal clock uh, and uh, having a, a two operations in the, in the bit cell sequentially. So therefore, it increases the uh, operations rate. What does that do in terms of design? Does it make it any harder or are people used to working with this? Um, in the external, externally, it is the same. It's using, for example, using a pseudo two-port uh, architecture or using a, a normal two-port uh, SRAM, externally, there is no difference. So this helps out quite a bit when you start getting into things like networking chips, right? Why don't you draw this out for us? Okay. okay, so now let's let's compare uh, a typical uh, multi-port memory architectures. Okay, let's say we have a four-port here. Okay, now let's look at four-port, dual-port, and a single port. So a typ typically a four-port memory will have four ports in and out of the memory, and typically it's a two-read, two-write architecture. So you can do two simultaneous reads and two simultaneous writes. And a dual port memory will have, uh, will be able to support typically a two read write or one read, one write. Two read write will be uh, uh, the memory being able to support two reads and two writes simultaneously. And for comparison, we'll have a single port here uh, where the reads and writes will typically come from one port. Okay. Now, uh, for this example, let's say these memories run at 1 gigahertz. Now, if, okay, now with the same performance, if you look at um, operations per second, uh, with the four port architecture, uh, you are able to do four giga operations per second because of this multi-port architecture. And with the dual port, you are, you're, it's giving me a two giga operations per second. And this is a one giga operations per second. So now we're looking, we're comparing these memories uh, using the same performance. And this is our uh, throughput, okay? Um, now, if you look at the sizes, the four, Port memory typically uses a 16T bit cell, and the dual port uses a 8T, and single port uses a. Okay, this one should be smaller. A 6T bit cell. Typically, this the 8T and the 6T bit cell comes from the foundry, and the 16T bit cell will be a custom bit cell. If you look at the size comparison, let's say we take the 6T. Uh, bit cell as a, a reference, um, the size difference between the 6T to the 8T is typically about uh, 2x. And then from here to here uh, is uh, maybe about 5 to 6x of the size. So what's the trade-off? Why are people using one versus another? So people typically use a uh, four-port, multi-port SRAM to improve the bandwidth, the throughput. So as you can see, with the four-port architecture, you're doing four giga operations per second um, with the same uh, performance. So the memory is running at the same speed, but you're getting four operations per second. Is the trade-off on there, though, cost because the area is larger? or? Yes, absolutely. So it's not just cost, but also power consumption. And with more uh, 
uh, with a bigger memory footprint, you're, you're looking at higher power and also leakage. So, so what we're looking at here is, we see an increase of 5 to 6x of the memory size for every increase of uh, 4x increase of uh, operations per second. So what happens on a, a pseudo SRAM architecture? What changes there? Okay, so with the pseudo architecture, um, as, as we've discussed uh, before, um, the pseudo architecture is using a, an, a double pump internal clock that can increase, can, that can double the operations rate for the bit cell. So, so for a four, for a pseudo four port SRAM, we are able to use the 8T bit cell inside the memory. And with the pseudo dual port architecture, we are using the 6T bit cell inside the memory. So by double pumping it, we're, we're, we're getting the same uh, multi-port functionality, but with a smaller bit cell in, in the pseudo-port architecture. So one of the, the problems that a lot of people are, are dealing with as they start getting into the most advanced nodes is um, both dynamic and um, static leakage. This will help with that? Yes, absolutely. So as you can see, if we using the same uh, example here with this with the pseudo SRAM architecture. Now we're looking at a, a 2x increase in size, right? For the same thing as opposed to a 5 to 6x increase in size. And, and with, the, with the smaller uh, footprint in the memory, we are reducing a lot of uh, power, dynamic and linking. Now they're starting to design seven 5 nanometer chips what happens there? Does this just get worse? Yes, absolutely. So this is how we're, we're dealing with this. And we work, We are going to see a lot more uh, multi-port memories in the chip to address uh, the bandwidth uh, uh, increase. So, so with this uh, pseudo architecture, it really helps. It can, this can even go up to 8 port or 16 port, depending on, on uh, the application. So what happens if you go beyond 8 port? Is 8 port the limit or can it go further? Um, beyond that, there's a, a dimin diminishing uh, return because as the bit cells gets too big, then it's better off uh, doing uh, duplicating the, the memory instead of using uh, just one big uh, pseudo SRAM architecture. Kari Tang, thanks for a great explanation. Thank you.